Welcome to the first live session of our lecture Innovation Management and Marketing at the Technical University of Lübeck in cooperation with the University of Lübeck. Um, my name is Marco Presnik and I welcome you uh, to our course. Due to Corona, we have all of my um, lectures uh, as live in the form of live sessions uh, and they will be uploaded on to my YouTube channel. So, first of all, uh, my fellow friends and students, um, it would be good if you can access the virtual university room here. Uh, this is the, uh, the page of the virtual university, the Moodle page. And um, you need this access code to register for the course. Um, because if you enroll in the course, I can easily communicate to you via email. So I can quickly type in an, uh, an email using the Moodle system of the university and everybody gets notified. So that, that, uh, that is terrific because then we can, um, I don't know, change some schedule and um, so on and so forth. I can let you know if, if some live session is online or not, or uh, is postponed, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, So please, uh, and we are recording all that, so you have all the information. If you need to contact me um, via email, um, this is my email address here, mark.oliver.opresnik at th uh, slash Lübeck or uh, hyphen Lübeck, uh, dot de. A little bit about uh, myself. Um, for the people who don't know me, uh, you can also access my uh, global Wikipedia entry here. My name is Marco Pressing. I'm a professor of business administration, in particular marketing and management at the Technical University of Lübeck. In addition to that, I'm a visiting professor to international universities such as Regents University in London and Cambridge Judge Business School. Uh, in the United Kingdom. I'm a member of the Board of Directors and Director of the Center for Marketing Management at the St. Gallen Management Institute in Switzerland, which is a worldwide renowned international business school. And uh, I'm very, very proud and honored to be Chief Research Officer at Kotler Impact International, the globally operating company by my friend and mentor, Professor Dr. Philip Kotler, who's the most prominent marketing professor on the planet. And um, I run my own company, Opresnik Management Consulting, and as such, I work as a business consultant, keynote speaker, uh, and coach for several uh, executives, top executives of international companies, institutions, and governments all over the world. Um, I have 10 years of experience from working at various management and strategy and marketing positions at Shell International Petroleum Company Limited, the last three years being in London. And I'm the author of multiple books uh, and articles um, about marketing, marketing management strategy, and negotiation. For the book, uh, oh, for the uh, for the course, you don't need a book. You don't need to buy a book. Um, and unfortunately, normally, if we would have been in normal class, uh, you can borrow this book here for free at the library. But also, the library is closed, so it's not really working. So that that is uh, that is a kind of a pity. Um, and if you uh, always observe carefully um, what we are discussing in the live session, uh, you don't need a book. But if you want to have a good book or look into a book which is which is quite comprehensive, uh, you can look at my uh, my own book here. It's now coming out in the third edition. This is the second edition here. End of this year, it's coming out as uh, third edition. It's available globally via Amazon. You just have to uh, take a copy of the uh, QR code. For China, of course, it may be um, a little bit different. Uh, this is the um, book I was uh, co-authoring. I'm also the global co-author to Professor Kotler. This is um, the best-selling marketing book on the planet right now when it comes to introductory text. Marketing introduction, it's the 14th edition, which just came out a couple of months ago. Um, and this is used by all universities, basically. Um, all over the world internationally and this I co-authored with my friend uh, Philip Kotler and Professor Dr. Gary Armstrong who are both uh, US very very renowned US professors. Again this is just for information purposes you don't need to read an entire book of course but that is just information. That is useful information um, I will um, upload this video uh, the recording of the live session uh, onto my YouTube channel which you can access here via this uh, website, or you just take a picture of the QR code, um, or you type in my name, Mark Oliver Presnick, um, at YouTube, 
and uh, yeah, it would I would also be delighted to get some subscribers. I don't know uh, from uh, from China if this is possible. So subscribe to this channel, tick the um, the notification bell in order to be informed about um, the latest videos. What I uh, like you to do, and um, I say that in the other lectures as well, it would have been so cool um, to do this in class. Um, now we do that in the form of the live sessions. Please go to thequizzes.com. It's a, it's a global uh, page. And register for free so there is no cost involved. Um, register for free with an email or access the QR code. And we will have live sessions and, and quizzes um, now via the internet, uh, otherwise we would have done that in, in, in the classroom. And every section of the presentation ends uh, with um, a little quiz of 10, 15, 20, 20 uh, multiple choice questions or true false questions. And then there's always one winner because the person who answers uh, most of the questions correctly and then also the time is a decisive element is the winner. So there's all, only always one winner right female or male one and i had the laser technology people of the university do specific uh pens which says marketing champion so um the winners of the quizzes will get a pen if we meet again or we can sh post it or i don't know how this works in the end but at least i have the pens at the university which uh run now marketing champion so i think it's a pretty cool idea i like this um combination of education and entertainment so call it edutainment it's a lot of fun um, so we'll, we'll have fun doing that together these are my social media profiles please liaise with me um, if possible uh, through social media um, this is my business uh, profile at LinkedIn um, best is to use my Facebook fan page uh, which my Pakistan friends for example did or the people from India or Philippines. Uh, we were just um, returning um, from India, Pakistan, Philippines, Indonesia, uh, where I was for Professor Kotla and uh, together with my Kotla, Im Kotla Impact team, management team, to give presentations on digital marketing, innovation uh, marketing, um, and stuff like that. Or um, also connect with me via Instagram. It is better for communication because I, I'm very, very quick at responding to Instagram direct messages or private messages. It is a big advantage over um, the email. Also, what would be cool is, I, I say it again, re with reference to the YouTube channel, if I upload the video on the YouTube, um, you can ask questions underneath the video. So, so just comment on the video, what you like, what you dislike, and if there's any kind of question, as to the topics which we are discussing, please type it underneath the video and I will respond to that via YouTube. So that is also functionality which is not offered by the university servers. Cool. So a lot of books, a lot of literature just for the sake of completeness. Uh, I quickly go over that. So what are we going to do? We are going to talk a little bit about the uh, fundamentals first. So what is marketing all about? How can it be defined? What are the most basic terms in marketing terminology? And then I'm providing an overview uh, as to marketing planning. So how is the marketing planning process at a company looking like? Then we're going to discuss marketing research, consumer behavior. And then we are dealing with uh, the marketing mix first um, as, as a whole. And then we are talking about every element of the marketing mix. The first one being promotion. So all forms of advertisement. Then the second one being place. So this is basically distribution policy and strategy, how you're distributing your products. Um, product. So this is about the product itself, about quality. It, it, it is about branding, how to build, build up a brand. What is a strong brand? And then um, uh, a topic is also um, the last P is pricing. So how do you price your products and services? What are kind of pricing strategies here? And then the second part of the lecture will be on innovation management, which is a very broad topic as well. I don't know how much of the stuff we are covering. For the exam, it is only relevant what we are posting, uh, what we are discussing in the live sessions and what I'm posting on the Moodle, um, what I would like you to read. So 
Uh, we're talking about product innovation, innovation, customer integration, simultaneous engineering, all kinds of topics here when it comes to innovation. Let's get started. So um, I love that. I'm always starting uh, with this kind of slide. Um, the guru of the gurus, uh, Peter F. Drucker, an American professor, um, even Kotler calls him the guru of the gurus. Um, professor Drucker was uh, a professor of um, management. He was the father of modern and contemporary management. And he coined the phrase, business has only two functions, marketing and innovation. Marketing and innovation, only two functions that are in business. So this is what I wanted to use. Um, why do you need innovation? Why do you need innovation? So um, any ideas, guys and ladies? Why do you need innovation in the, um, in the company? Usually in order to stay ahead of the game, in order to stay ahead of the competition, um, you need to innovate, but not only innovate one, one, one moment in time, but you need to, yes, to have progress, um, to innovate on a continuous basis. Think about um, innovative companies in the past. Think about, uh, for example, Kodak, right? You still remember Kodak? Um, they were very advanced when it comes to photography but um, after the change happened towards digital photography, they died, right? They died. Uh, but a company which has not died is um, Fujifilm. We are working with Fujifilm. And Fujifilm, uh, they reinvented themselves and they went into imagery for, uh, for the medical, in the medical um, area of competence. And so Fuji survived and uh, others died so to be to be innovative one moment in time is not enough Drucker meant you need to continuously innovate in order to stay ahead of the game and that is also what what i was just reading here in the um uh in order to be top of the market Roshanak is writing that or to become better and different from others yes habib uh, i agree um in particular uh, in a dynamic word as as sandra is uh, is writing that is very, very paramount. I'll give you another example I'm always using in this respect is BlackBerry. BlackBerry uh, coming from Research in Motion, REM. Uh, and BlackBerry was the inventor of the Pushman notification system, right? They invented the option to have mails pushed to your mobile phone. And it, when I was working at Shell, it was a status symbol to have a BlackBerry. That was a status symbol. And, and where's BlackBerry today? Basically, it's gone. In 2016, officially, market share of BlackBerry dropped to 0%. Or think about Nokia. Yeah? Five years ago, Nokia was still world market leader when it comes to mobile phones. But then they collapsed. Very quickly, they collapsed. When the iPhone was introduced in 2007, right? Um, Nokia was still there. And they had, a, they had some kind of an advantage because they had a big market share and they had also stylish phones. But then they overslept the trend towards um, the smartphones and they stick too long to the old traditional uh, products that um, they, um, they were overtaken by competitors. And now Nokia is basically gone. It's still there, but they had to reinvent themselves. And in the mobile phone technology, um, when it comes to smartphones, they are, um, they, they are not existent, basically. So, therefore, innovation is important. Uh, on the other hand side, of course, marketing is important. But what is marketing? Marketing is not so much about, um, it's not a supporting function in the organization here. But marketing is um, a philosophy. It is to direct every activity of the enterprise towards the customer. So to be totally customer focused and satisfy their needs and wants better than the competition. So marketing is not so much about selling. We'll talk about uh, that in a couple of, uh, couple of minutes. Um, marketing means, like I mentioned, to direct activities of the enterprise towards um, the market and the consumer. I love that quote. It's a very famous quote from Zeno Davidov. 
Davidoff is, uh, is saying marketing. I never did practice any marketing. I only always did satisfy the needs and wants of my customers better than the competition. That was the response of Zeno Davidoff when he was asked to explain the success behind the launch of Cool Water. Cool Water was one of the most successful fragrances of all time. And when it was launched into the market, it um, Davidoff won the marketing award of the year uh, for that. And he was asked by the uh, Wall Street Journal of Financial Times in his office, can you explain the marketing strategy? And then he responded like that. He said, I never did do any marketing. Can you spell the word? I don't know what you're talking about, right? Uh, so I only always did satisfy the needs and wants of my customers better than their competition. If you do so in an appropriate way, what is cool is you can stretch the brand into different kind of categories, right? You can look at Davidoff is doing uh coffee it's doing uh the company is doing uh leather cases it's doing cognac it's doing ties it's doing fragrances and it's doing of course cigars because that is the heritage where davidoff is coming from so originally they have been doing cigars so this is what made them big right so it is very important to understand that what do all the products here have in common what do all the products have in common not only the um, the brand, but yeah, luxury, a certain kind of um, a certain kind of positioning. So they're all positioned price quality wise in the same kind of um, yeah portfolio in the same kind of section. The positioning is similar. What would happen if uh, if Davidoff now would I don't know sell watches? Let's assume for twenty dollars. What would happen to the brand? What would happen to the brand? What do you think? Nobody would buy it because it would be fake. Ha, huh, probably. But there's there's more to it. Uh, yeah, attract different customers. Yeah, that could be an advantage, uh, Tamara, but... Um, it also has disadvantages because let me tell you my story. I always love to tell that kind of a story um, about Mont Blanc and uh, and Pelican. What's the better quality? Who, who's what's the better brand? What's the more luxury brand? Is it Pelican or is it Mont Blanc? Pelican or Mont Blanc? What do you think? Mont Blanc, of course, we all do think so. But why is it? Why is that? Because. Um, yeah, everybody's writing Mont Blanc, but that is only our perception. It's not actually true. Why? Because let me tell you the story. In the past, and we all also learn a lot about marketing now, because in the past, what happened was um, that I take it away. Otherwise, we have two. Yes. In the past, Pelican and Mont Blanc were of um, similar quality uh, and they were distributed via selective retail shops right via selected retailers and then at some moment in time pelican had an idea and pelican said oh there are so many students so many pupils at the university scholars uh undergraduates etc etc postgraduates so people looking for fine quality but not luxury quality but inexpensive thing which is really working. We call that good enough product. And they said, oh, how many students do we have? How many scholars do we have all over the world? Oh, there are millions and millions and hundreds of millions. We are not selling to them. We are not selling. We are not in this market. So they decided to step into that market. So they made a very inexpensive pen, um, Pelican uh, pencils, so for, for, for students, for normal students, for normal people and scholars. And they sold it very inexpensively for around seven euros, about seven euros was the, was the uh, original price. And they also um, extended the distribution. So they also sold it via uh, non-exclusive retail. So they sold it in supermarket, in the drugstore, at kiosks, everywhere. It was available everywhere. What happened? What was the result? Millions of people bought it. Yes. But how, what happened to the luxury ones? 
What happened to the expensive pencils of Bilica? Yeah, they got left out. Nobody bought them anymore. Why? It's less exclusive. Correct, Celine. It's less exclusive. So, and what happened was the perception of the brand eroded. What is a brand? Uh, a brand, I'm always saying a pragmatic definition is a selection of perceptions in the hearts and minds of the customer. A brand is a collection of perceptions in the hearts and minds of the customer. And if you hear all the, on the slide, all the products have one thing in, com in common. So it's a price, quality, relationship and positioning. You, you call that positioning. And if with one brand you're stepping into lots of different kind of categories, quality pricing wise, what happens? The perception of the brand is diluted, is, is a little bit, it is eroding. It's, it's getting fuzzy. It's not clear and distinct anymore. And what happened? What, what, what was the story? The end of the story, Pelican sold millions of pencils, but they failed to sell the expensive ones. What did Montblanc do? Montblanc they said oh they were a bit jealous they looked at pelican oh they're selling millions of pencils but they didn't follow them they didn't copy them they stayed in their selective retail and they even increased the pricing for their products for their pencils and what is mont blanc now what is mont blanc now it's perceived as being much more luxury although still and you can go to pelican and check it out Pelican has pencils for tens of thousands of dollars still, but the market share in this segment is very, very, very low. And what is Mont Blanc like? Have you ever seen a Mont Blanc shop at an airport? Yes, because basically at every big airport, there's Mont Blanc shop. Have you ever seen Pelican shop at an airport or in the city? No, because there's none. What is Mont Blanc selling? Pencils, of course, but what is Mont Blanc selling as well? Belts, leather cases, watches, inexpensive watches. No, Mont Blanc is selling watches for a couple of thousands of euros and it's selling pencils for thousands of euros and it's selling very expensive leather cases. So um, you, I could do the same slide basically for Mont Blanc. Marketing is also about branding, of course building strong brands and if you have a strong brand if you set up a strong brand if you build up a strong brand you can capitalize on that but if you use one brand name and stretch it too far into other categories we talk we call that overstretching we call that overstretching you overstretch a brand so it's like in fitness if you if you stretch before you go running um that is fine but you can also overstretch the muscle and then you have a problem of course so a lot of stuff already on the first uh, on the first slide now um next one i love that one it's my all-time favorite slide um using the example of uh, harley davidson if you look at the Harley Davidson Softail Fat Boy motorcycle and compare it to the Yamaha Wildstar, what strikes you? What is, if you look at the functional characteristics, right? What is remarkable? So you might you may say that even the um, the the Yamaha, the Yamaha here, I, I have to change the color a little bit uh, because uh, then it's difficult, better to see. The Yamaha even outperforms um, the uh, the Harley Davidson when it comes to certain kind of characteristics. Um, however, if you look at the pricing, it's quite different. Yeah, Harley is much more expensive than uh, than Yamaha. Of course, this is due to the brand, but also if you look at the design here, it's quite similar, isn't it? So the design, if you look at the design of the motorcycle, it's very similar. It's very, very similar. So the difference is all, it is all based in the, uh, in the brand and what the brand stands for. 
because what is the what is the brand standing for the brand sta stands not only for motorcycles but it is more like i said yeah quality um but is is is, is yamaha going back is yamaha bad quality no it's not yeah it's a brand story it's a brand story it's emotions is yamaha bad quality no but if we think about yamaha what are your associations with yamaha what would you say just type in the the comment guitar yes <laughs> yes our engine when it comes to boats or i have a yamaha at my home i am I'm, I'm not switching the camera but i have a piano coming from uh, yamaha yes uh and wang is saying that piano uh they're doing um also um dvd players uh stuff like that hi-fi instruments everything kind of stuff but what is harley davidson harley davidson is very very much focused um on motorcycles and there they have a very 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 strong brand because actually what they're selling is not motorcycles basically what they're selling is a certain kind of a lifestyle right emotions that has been mentioned in the in the in the chat freedom independence adventure this is what they're selling and that is very very important to understand that is very important to understand and that is how marketing works right um i have a story um coming uh, actually from uh, from china when i was first at the ECUS, east china university of science and technology and uh some of my um people here my students are coming from the ECUS. um and when i was first at the ECUS, i was it was my first time ever in in china it was my first time in shanghai and um i went into the lecture and before i was walking around there in shanghai uh, at the bund and i was, was seeing a lot of uh, the bazaars there where they sell the copy watches and also copy clothes and uh, stuff like that and then i went into the lecture i was giving a presentation actually on marketing um and one student had very cool sneakers and uh, very cool trainers and coming from nike and i was asking the chinese student uh, and i said so you have very cool trainers where where did you get them did you get them at the bazaar here because oh over there at the bazaar at the um booth there i saw a couple of people selling those trainers and they they were not very expensive so they were about ten dollars or fifteen dollars right of course fake ones and uh he was looking at me like that and say oh, professor no 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 i got it from the nike flagship store at people square and i said okay you have a nike flagship store uh Probably I go there and it's less expensive in China than it is in the US or than it is in uh, um, in Europe. And uh, I said, how much did you pay? And he said, 150 US dollars. And I said, wow, 150 US dollars. But you have the same sneakers here at the bazaar for five dollars or ten dollars, something like that. And I'm, I know that um, my pronunciation is not very good now, but um, my Chinese friends will correct me. Um, I know that Nike is, for example, using local testimonials. Lusha, Lusha, it's a very famous uh, athletic um, champion in uh, in China. He's a hurdle race, uh, by the way, hurdle race uh, champion. Uh, and I was asking my Chinese friends, do you think, or my, this, this specific gentleman, do you think you can run as quickly as Lusha? wearing these trainers and he said no but i feel like lucia when i'm wearing the original nike trainers and that is brand and that is the power of the brand so you can copy the product even have the same kind of trademark on there which is of course not correct but um but you have a different kind of um different kind of feeling uh and therefore this is what this is what marketing can do marketing can enable you and companies to build strong brands and capitalize on that so i love that it's a very nice story about brand building and about marketing 
another one um another example here and we can uh, of course do that uh forever um that is true religion true religion is a brand which is not very very old true religion is a brand which is around now 10 12 years old um and mustang is a brand which is more than 100 years old um but if you look at and if you look at the two jeans okay come on yeah different kind of stitching but kind of um similarity between the two of them but of course look at the price how is it possible how can you sell um jeans for double the price of course or triple or four times the price of the uh, of the mustang it's the same as with the harley davidson's brand but how can you build a brand in that very short period amount of time how is that possible do you know the story good promoters correct good promoters and they had good promoters what did they do um <clears throat> they copied apple how is that possible what does it mean they copied apple right uh, they apple when they launched the ipod in um it was the ipod was launched first in one country of course in the us we know that but do you know in which um in which city it was launched in which city was the ipod launched first globally yes in los angeles do you know in which district of los angeles the ipod was used first was launched first yes beverly hills 90210 um yes that is that is it's famous but, but how did it became famous how did it become famous um it was exactly what 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 neil said so what they what they did was literally i'm exaggerating a little bit but it, uh, i wove it in um uh, put it into a little story um they basically they were hopping onto a tour bus <clears throat> so so uh, apple was not doing that but um, the Apple people, they were going to the celebrities in, uh, in Hollywood and they were giving them um, the iPods uh, away for free. And um, then the stars and celebrities started running around with the, with the white in your phones and the, uh, and the iPod. And um, it was a very characteristic advertisement during those days because you could only see the silhouette of people and uh, it was only zero out of people and you had the wide in your phones hanging out uh, hanging out of that those kind of people right and that that was um what created a very very big demand for um for the apple uh for the apple brand and for the apple ipod in specific in, in particular and true religion did the same thing so they they hopped literally they, they hopped onto a tour bus in hollywood and uh the tour the bus driver said oh no we're coming to the house of michael douglas and and then they said oh stop stop please we have a package for michael douglas and then they hopped off the tour bus and uh they put uh 20 pairs of jeans in front of the house of michael douglas no we're coming to the house of brad pitt and oh stop stop we have a package for brad pitt so basically this is what they did they provided the hollywood stars um with those products and um after Sexiest Man Alive, uh, Colin Farrell uh, was running around wearing True Religion jeans um, and other celebrities in Hollywood. Um, and those uh, stars have been photographed, of course, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. There was a coming a great there was a great demand coming for the uh, for the True Religion brand, which catapulted um, True Religion to the upmarket positioning where it is today another example i um i love that one is a quote coming from porsche uh porsche uh the founder um ferdinand porsche once said we build cars nobody needs but everybody wants that is a nice uh the nice quote very nice quote from uh, from ferdinand porsche so basically you don't need a Porsche Cayenne Turbo, for example, in uh, California, because you have very, very rigid speed limit in California. It's even stricter or more strict than uh, in uh, Switzerland. However, there are more Porsche Cayenne Turbo being sold in uh, California than anywhere else in the world. Why is that? It is because um, 
the power of the brand and it's not so much about how far the car can go but it's more what porsche stands for and um it's the same kind of example as i was giving with uh, zino davidov or montblanc or uh, for example to religion so uh probably we can we can um th that was the first section basically and um I can try to now run a little video. Um, I don't know whether this works, but it would be a good test. I run an embedded video here. If it works like that. Uh, boom. No, um, one moment. I quickly try to do photo. Okay. Let me try to, uh, to run a video and you tell me if you, if you have any sound or you see the picture? I don't know, it's embedded. At least we can see what's happening. There's a car and uh, there's one guy in the car. He's driving, uh, he's, he's pressing the uh, acceleration pedal. And the car makes some noise is and he's cool transmitting that via the phone to a friend yeah. and say, is that cool or what? It's incredible. The 450 horsepower Porsche Cayenne Turbo. Porsche Cayenne there, is Turbo. No there is no substitute. That is cool, uh, cool ad. And now my question is, did you, uh, I don't know, was there um, the picture you did see, but is there also sound? No sound, unfortunately. Okay. Very lagging, no sound. Sorry for that. That is <clears throat> a bit of an issue. Sorry about that. I was describing that. Um, so the embedded video, they work, but it's a little bit tricky with the, um, with the sound. Okay. So this ends our first session uh, for today because I, uh, nobody likes to listen to me for more than uh, one hour, I assume. Um, so I want to end the first uh, live session um, now at this moment in time, but I stay in the line for your questions. Uh, concerning administrative purposes or content wise and uh, but I quickly uh, end the transmission here thank you very much for your uh, for your attention I uh, wishing you all the very very best cheers and goodbye